Hello YouTubers and welcome to a Hot Toys review of the DX09 Batman Michael Keaton figure from uh, Batman the 1989 movie directed by Tim Burton. Now for those of you who are regulars, regular visitors to my channel um, or subscribers, you're probably a bit surprised to see this, um, but this is something I've been meaning to review since April. Uh, there's a reason why I haven't reviewed it. Um, the figure was actually damaged when I got it, um, and so I had a long, long wait trying to get a replacement head for the figure, so that's why the review hasn't come. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know who I am, and you may have just stumbled upon this searching for it, um, I am Matthew Toffolo. Um, I'm known as Batman March. Uh, my main focus in terms of videos on YouTube are uh, based on Doctor Who, the uh, British science fiction show, longest science fiction series in the world. Um, I review the figures that come out um, on a regular basis, and I also do a series of stop-motion animated adventures um, using those figures. Um, and this year I've decided to move more into the Batman side of things, if you're interested in stop motion and that kind of thing, um, I do have a Batman stop motion series coming out this year. I released a teaser trailer for it last year, and for those of you who have subscribed me because of that teaser trailer and are probably wondering where is that series, it is coming. It starts shooting on Sunday night. I start filming the scenes in the Batcave, so that's coming later this year. I've got another teaser trailer coming up uh, within the next few weeks, so please keep your eyes open for that. So let's uh, have a quick look at what we've got to review today. Well, um, why am I reviewing this particular figure? Well, this is my first Hot Toys toy. Um, I've never owned one before. Um, I've always wanted to, but you know they're so ridiculously expensive that I couldn't. Um, but when I knew that they were doing uh, figures from the 1989 film, I knew that I had to have them because for me, the 1989 film is my favorite out of the Batman movies basically because it cemented my um, interest in Batman and it just sort of blew me away when I first saw it. I think I was about three or four at the time. Pretty young to be watching it, I know, but it was amazing. And that was it. It made me become the Batman fan I am today. So I thought, now that I've got this figure, I'd share my thoughts and feelings of it with you guys. So I'm just going to very quickly give a brief rundown of what this figure actually comes with. So you've got your figure, you've got the base which lights up, you have two plastic rods which insert into the cape for Batman to spread his cape out, um, you have six different um, hands, well that's three pairs, you have three extra pairs of hands basically, um, and of course you have the closed fists. So you've got four pairs of hands for Batman, you have here two interchangeable face plates, which I'll look at more in a sec. Um, and we have a few other different things, if I just move you along. Um, we've got the bat rope, the gauntlet, um, the plate that comes out of his wrist gauntlet. Um, you have smoke pellets, throwing stars, and the spear gun, which has a few little bits and pieces that come with that the remote control for the Batmobile, and a bomb. Um, I will be looking at those in more details, that's just a quick rundown. So normally with my reviews I just go straight into the figure, um, but I will very quickly look at the packaging, mainly because the packaging on these toys are so nice, so I'm going to clear all this up and uh, we'll have a quick little flick through the box. So here is the box, um, it's got a sort of silver metallic sheen to it, if I just move it, you can see how the light reflects off of that. Um, all the basic stuff has got the movie logo, Batman DX09, 1-6 scale collectible figure. 1-6 um, scale is 12 inches for those of you who aren't, uh, aren't aware of that. Um, the picture on the front is a picture of the toy, it's not actually of Michael Keaton. Um, the images, there's a few, there's the main picture, there's one of him gliding, there's one of him with the spear gun out. Um, you probably can't see them very well. And there you are, there's Spear Gun Batman. You can just about see him gliding in the background. Um, those are actually the uh, 
images that were released, the spec images, you know, from the when the figure was announced, and you can see those online. Um, if we just spin it around, again, all the same old spiel, Batman 1-6 scale. On the back, a few bits of things, don't stick it in your mouth if you're a child because you're going to choke on it and die. And then on the side here, we've got an advert for the new Batmobile that's coming out, which I'd like to get, but at £500, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to. So, if we just open it up, it's attached with a magnet on the inside. This is also removable, this advert, just in case certain collectors don't want it on there. I think it looks quite neat, so I'm leaving it on there. So, the box opens up. Whoops, that falls down. Um, the box opens up, you've got a bit of spill here about the film. Just a brief overview there. It's actually a bit clunky the way they've written that, but you know, it's fun. I'm just going to pull this away. It's nice, uh, lovely foam to keep it all nice and tidy, keep the figure safe. Um, you've got a little bit of writing here. It says, one will claim the light, which is a play on the poster tagline, which was one, um, only one will claim the night. Um, so I don't know if that was perp uh, done on purpose because of the nature of this little accessory or if it was just a bit of a cock up. But um, you get this, it's a clear piece of plastic with the bat signal on it. If you shine a torch through it, then it will project the bat signal onto the wall. I've not actually had a go at doing that yet, but um, I will at some point, but it's just nice anyway. Um, so then we have here, this is what the figure came in. Um, the interchangeable heads, well the interchangeable face plates were up there, the figure was in there, all bits and pieces around the side explaining to you what each thing is. Stuff there on the toy. Um, and then you've got all that sort of down there, talking about who worked on the figure, who did the sculpting and whatnot. Um, and then if you pull this card insert out, that's how you get to the toy itself. The interchangeable hands sat in there. Here you had some extra hand pegs and fins for Batman's gauntlets. And so inside you have an area there, that's where the cape was, the rods, the other accessories, um, and the stand, and that there is the, the manual for how to use the figure. So that's basically the inside of the box. Really nice, lovely packaging. Um, not as extravagant as other ones that Hot Toys have done. Um, but, you know, still very nice. Uh, so, now that that's out of the way, let's have a look at the figure itself. Briefly going to talk to you about the articulation. I'm just going to take him off the, off the stand, because we don't need that for the time being. Um, Articulation-wise, he has articulation at the shoulders. They're ball-jointed. Um, the rubber suit actually hinders a lot of his articulation. I'm just going to flick his cape out of the way. Um, he has articulation at the elbows, ball jointed wrists, he has ab crunch articulation as you can see, he can go like that and sort of go back a bit. Uh, he does have waist articulation as well, articulation at the hips again ball jointed so he can move it all around again because of the rubber suit it's slightly hindered, and obviously you don't want to tear the suit because it is only rubber. Um, articulation at the knee, art uh, ankle articulation as well, as you can see, and that's also ball jointed. <laughs> articulation at the head is limited, it only sort of turns slightly, um, which is probably more than Michael Keaton had in the actual suit. Um, so, you know, that's, that's not really a problem, that's fine. Um, and that is it for articulation. Um, there's not really anything beyond that, but you know that's that's okay. You know you don't really need an excessive amount, I don't think, um, for this figure in particular because his movement was so limited in the film. If we just take a quick look at the detail, and then I'll go on to things like the purrs <clears throat> and things like that. So let's see if he'll stand up for me. Cheers, Batman. So here we go. Let's look at the face. So. The detailing on the face, really, really nice, amazing quality, you know, exactly what you expect from Hot Toys. Um, 
the sort of detail that they put in their figures is unmatched to the point where you could look at this and it could easily be a it could easily be a bit of footage from the film. If you just look at the neutral face paint, you can see all the little pores, blemishes of the skin, the you know the the way the light reflects off the lips. It's amazing. Um, if we go up, I know I'm going to have a proper look at the uh, the purrs in a sec, but you know you can really see. The eyes, um, the actual bit of the human eye sort of underneath the mask isn't black, it's um, almost flesh colour with like a black wash on top, really giving the impression that that is makeup um, over, you know, human skin, um, which is really, really good. And because of the way that the purrs works, the, the way the light glistens off the eyes really gives it that extra wow factor. Um, if we look at the cowl, just looking at the texture of it, you can see really nicely sculpted. There's a real nice texture. Texture. I can't talk today. There's a real nice texture to it. Just how it looks in the film. The emblem, really nice. That uh, one that was designed specifically for the movie. Really nice crisp paint job there. Oh, going in rather than out. Um, and you know, if we just look at the detailing on the cowl as well the sculpting of the brow and all the lines it really does look fantastic um, the detail is really good even to the point where if we tip him up you can even see holes there if the camera will focus in you can even see the holes for his nostrils so he can actually breathe in the mask which is nice <laughs> I thought that was a, a nice little touch. The cape is really cool. Um, lots of people have complained about the cape. It is a bit of a pain to pose. I will give you that. However, it feels and looks really, really good. Um, it's sort of like a, a you know, it's pleather really. It's only a plastic leather, but it has that um, look of real leather, um, and it looks heavy. Um, it's thick, it's, um, but not too thick, it's got an inside layer which is like a, a satin type material which gives it that nice shiny effect which is just like the movie cape and then you can see that there's a bit of the leathery type material inside as well. Um, here are one of the holes here to put the, uh, the rods in for the cape. Um, so the cape's really nice. It also has um, a piece of wire that goes all the way through the bottom, which allows you to bend it and mould it as you wish. Uh, if we just look at the body. Again, really nice texturing and sculpting work. The muscles are really nicely defined. You can see how the light catches all the little bumps and ridges of the bodywork itself, although it's only soft rubber, um, you know, it looks it looks solid, it looks sturdy, um, and it looks like it does in the film. Uh, again, the same further down, like on the knee pads, you can see that they've you've got sculpted creases to make it look like the suit beneath it is in use, um, and you've got that as well on the arms. You have creases, and then you get your own sort of creases when you're <laughs> when you're bending the figure. The boots are really nice. Um, I just move his cape out of the way so you can get a better look at that. The buckle on the strap there, painted silver. You can see all the individual like stitches and things. There we go. That's a better look. Uh, they've even got the sculpting on the sole of the shoe. <clears throat> no Nike logo, but that's because that would probably cost even more money to, to get that. So, uh, but that, you know, that's fine. And then if I just take a look at the gauntlets, again, really nice. These basically just slide over the arm. Um, in a few sections, this 
pieces, a separate piece that's been glued on, which is almost like a gunmetal grey. The same here with the fins. Um, careful with these, I snapped one. Um, luckily, it glued back in fine, so that was okay. I didn't even have to use one of my spares. Um, it basically just fell out as opposed to snapped off. If you look on the inside, you can see all of the little creases there as well. Again, giving it that realistic touch. And if we look at this particular hand, you can see all the silver studs on the inside of the glove, like the gloves in the film had. Um, and, you know, the fists of all the, the right creases and whatnot. And there's like a lighter grey bit of paint for the index finger there. So that's uh, really, really good. Fantastic bodywork um, and detailing. And finally, the utility belt. Again, really nice. Lovely sculpt. I've always been a fan of this belt. The buckle always look really cool. Um, I've not tried to take it off because that would be insane. But it's really, really good. Um, and I think for the body, it's really fantastic. Um, if I go back now and talk to you about the purrs, uh, this is actually what was broken on my figure. Now, I'd heard a lot of horror stories with purrs before, but you don't really take any notice until it happens to you. And I took it out of the box, and I was psyched about the purrs, because I'd never, obviously, I've never owned a Hot Toys figure, so I've never experienced being able to make your figure look in all different directions, which, you know, is um, fantastic for, for posability and things. The problem with it was, um, as soon as I had a go at using the, the purrs, it broke. Straight away. Straight away. One eye was looking one way, and the other eye was looking the other. So it really did just mess the entire figure up. So it had to be sent back, and a replacement head arrived last week. So that's why I've only just got round to making the, the review. So if I just show you the back of the head, <clears throat> you can see that there's a square panel. I'm not overly keen on it, but it's not too bad. Um, I think pe some people have said that in the flesh you can't really notice it. You can. I think that's a bit of a bit of a lie, really. I think they're just trying to. I think they're trying to see things that aren't there, really, because you can see that he's got that sculpted into the back of his head. But it's not something that's worrying me too much. Head comes off, attached by two magnets, and then you have a small joystick inside which controls the eyes. So I'll just very briefly give you a demonstration now. As you can see, the eyes are moving around, looking up, looking down, forward again, that side, that side. Um, my eyes are um, slightly, slightly stiff moving to his right, so I don't tend to move them that way because I don't want to bloody break them. Um, it doesn't look much like that, but then when you start posing him, you can see what what the effect it has on the figure. So it is really cool. It's a very nice feature, so long as it doesn't break. Um, I'm just going to very quickly go through the um, face plates. Um, it comes with two extra face plates. This is the neutral one that it comes packaged with. Um, if I ju they are a pain in the ass to get out, though. <coughs> there is a knack to it, but it doesn't always seem to work. This one works better, so it just comes out. Again, it's the magnet job. I haven't put it in all the way snugly, because I know otherwise I'm going to spend ages trying to get it out. But that's good. I like it. You can use it with the um, remote control, so you can have him posing as if he's talking into the remote. Or it almost acts as like that little smirk that he gives to to Jack Napier when he makes the, the joke about his outfit uh, at Access Chemicals. So, yeah, really nice. Like I said, really good detailing there. You can see all the paintwork on the teeth again. The detailing of the skin and stuff is just amazing. The battle damaged version. Um, it really is... I suppose it's meant to depict the end of the film. It's not actually accurate to the end of the film because he has got a big scab on the side of his face and he's covered in dirt and things. But uh, it is really good. You know, again, the blood looks amazing. Really nicely done. It does look like 
blood is dripping off of his face it has a nice realistic shine to it when caught in the light you know it just looks really really good regardless of whether it's accurate or not it's just nice to have it on display because you can put him in fight poses you know make him look like he's uh, gone toe to toe with the Joker's goons and it hasn't gone in his favour I'm going to very quickly talk to you about the accessories overall I mean the, the figure itself is fantastic um, although it's an expensive figure it is definitely worth the money it just looks so good it's you know this isn't a toy this is like a piece of art it's, it's so realistic um, and in some ways I'm sad that I mean it, it the figure didn't come with a Michael Keaton head sculpt which I wish it did because although this looks good the the level of detail that they can put on just like the skin and things is so fantastic that you know having all this cowl which is just black seems a bit of a waste really it would be nice to have had it would have been nice to have had uh, a Michael Keaton head sculpt so you could really see just how detailed hot toys can get the sculpt hopefully the Batman returns um, Keaton that comes out will have uh, a Keaton head so we'll have to uh, we'll have to see so I'm just gonna stop there for a bit and very briefly talk you through the accessories I'm not gonna go through all the hands and like show you the f hands on the figure because it's gonna take too far too long but I'm just gonna very briefly talk you through some of the bits and pieces that the figure comes with different open hands to hold different things that one there is for uh, the, the spear gun which I'll show you in a sec um, this is the open palm hand for the uh, like the little armoured thing that shoots out of his hand um, you know when he catches that guy in the testicles with it which is always fun you're not actually told what particular hand does what it's really just a case of trial and error um, but you know you can put them in all sorts of different poses some are like these ones I think are used for holding up the cape as well and this one is for the remote control for the Batmobile here are the throwing stars you don't actually see him use these in the film but they are in the vault I believe uh, where his suit is kept really nicely detailed one of my favorite accessories I have to say uh, is the bat rope and I love posing him with this I think he looks great like ready to hook it around those goons legs like he does at the beginning of the movie uh, really nicely detailed it looks just like it does in the film the tips are silver as you can see there uh, it doesn't fold up like it does in the film because, you know, at this scale it would just break. Um, but, you know, still very nice. Nice long piece of string as well. You get three of these, which are the little gas smoke pellets, even. These are the smoke pellets. Um, you He does use them in the film, but you never actually get a good look at them. Um, but they're really nice, really sharp and pointy actually. Really nicely detailed, just clear plastic with a black wash over the top and then the silver point, really nice. The little remote control for the Batmobile. I love this because you've got the bat signal itself sculpted onto it, which is insane because it's so teeny tiny. The mesh there they talks into, red button on the side and on that side. Really nicely detailed, like the grip of it really really cool shame that I'm not going to be able to get the Batmobile because uh, it would be great to be able to pose the figures with that um, I've already showed you this the, the hand guard thing not as detailed it is just a glossy piece of black plastic this is really nice the gauntlet this is what he uses when he saves Vicky Vell from the museum um, about halfway through the film um, it's really nicely detailed it looks fantastic very 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 fiddly though as you can see if I zoom in there's a spring there um, and I fear for, I really fear that that's, that's gonna go but these um, parts do move up and down I'm not gonna move them all the way um, I have got some pictures of him using it and that's basically the they fold down and then the zip line 
fires out of either side and then he zip lines down the steps, smashes through the doors. So really, really cool. He also comes with this, which is a bomb. Um, he doesn't actually use this in the film either, um, but it was made for the film, so unless this was in a deleted scene or not, who knows. Um, really, really nicely detailed. You can see there's all the numbers on the front, all the zeros, a little counter, countdown thing, timing mechanism. Really, really cool, really detailed little wire on the side there, all those little little bits. So, you know, though it wasn't used, still a very nice piece. He also comes with his spear gun, as we can see here. Um, the Again, this is also really cool, lovely detailing, really intricate. The um, end of it doesn't come out, which is a shame. Um, I would have liked to have been able to make it look like he fired it or whatever. But um, no, 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 still, still very good. Um, it, the actual end of it does detach, um, which is nice, like it should do, just like it does in the film. Uh, and then this folds up. As you can see, there's a magnet there. Why is there a magnet? Well, it's there so that you can attach it to his belt. I think I've got it upside down, but, you know, it gives you the idea. So this attaches to his belt like so. And this piece has this extra little piece, which just has a hole in the bottom. And then this end, what you normally click into the handle of the spear gun clicks on like that or the other way around depending on what takes your fancy and then this is a bit fiddly so I'm not going to do it clicks onto the utility belt um, I clipped it on and I had a real hard time trying to get it off and I was worried that I was going to scratch the yellow paint off the belt so I didn't do it but when it is on it looks really nice looks just like it does in the film and it just clicks on like that and then you can Pose Batman as if he was about to take it off his belt and hang a criminal off a balcony or whatever. So again, really, really nice stuff. Um, just going to very quickly talk about the rods with the cape. Now, I actually haven't um, attempted to um, pose him with his arms up and like the cape up. So I'm going to have a go at doing that now. Um, just very quickly show you, like I said earlier, the rods fit into these small holes on the cape. If I just slot it in, and there you are, just threads in like that. So there he is with the cape outstretched. Not perfect by any means. I mean, if I spent another 20 odd minutes doing it, I could have really made the cape look nice. But it just gives you a rough idea of how the cape works, uh, how the rods work, you know. They just stick in like that he grabs the ends and pulls them up. I have seen people manage to somehow, God knows how, really get it up high so he's properly, you know, doing it like he does in the film, like whew, up like that, but um, or higher. And finally, just to end the review, just very quickly look at the stand. Um, here it is. Uh, you've got the inverted logo, so it's yellow rather than being black with yellow on the inside. People don't like it. I'm not really fussed, I actually have a t-shirt which the which is basically this, so it doesn't really bother me. Um, and uh, you have this metal bit here, you know, the crotch of the figure sits in there, um, and that's really tight and springy so it fits in snug. It's not something I use because these bits do tend to dig into the legs and cause marks, so it's not something that I like to do. Um, at the front, a nice silver metal plate that says Batman Movie Master Series Deluxe figure, which is what this is. And it also has two little lights at the front which are poseable and switch on like that. Fantastic figure, um, you know, spot on. Detailing is amazing. Um, the amount of articulation and the bits and pieces it come, comes with um, are really, really good. Bit disappointed it didn't come with a Michael Keaton head sculpt um, to display on another body, but uh, I'm sure that that will come eventually, probably with the uh, Batman Returns figure, seeing as he does take his cowl off. 
um, in that f film with the rest of the suit on. My only real issues are trying to get the cape to pose. Which, you know, if you've got a lot of time, you can you can do it. You can make it look okay. My only real issues are probably with the purrs. Um, not an issue per se, but just if you're going to get this figure, be very careful with those eyes. It's something that I don't really like to touch now. I don't really like to use the purrs on the off chance that they're going to break and I'm going to scream and go mad and kill someone. Um, so just be wary of that. Um... Thanks for watching this review, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm getting the Jack Nicholson figure uh, as well. In fact, he was shipped the other day, so he should be here by next week. So uh, please look out for a review on the Jack Nicholson figure as well. So thanks for watching this review, guys, and I shall see you in my next review, which will be the DX08 Joker. <laughs>